I'm Vince Lee, I'm part of the Wildlife Monitoring Group um, Butterfly Transect team. So we're going to do a butterfly transect on Lark Rise Farm today. Um, this is basically how we record and monitor the butterflies throughout the year. So we start at the beginning of April and finish at the end of September and go out every week in, in suitable weather. So the first thing to do whenever we start the survey is to fill in the details of what we're, who we are and what we are and where we're doing it. So this is the Barton Butterfly Transect Sheet. We only do the transects when the weather conditions are suitable and during the times of day when butterflies are active. So we start at about any time after quarter to 11 and finish um, any time around 4 o'clock. Um, and it has to be at least 40% uh, of the time uh, sunny and at least uh, 17 degrees centigrade. Today's temperature and sunshine are well above the threshold, so it's a fine day to do it. If it was cloudy or windy or rainy, we wouldn't be doing the count. So the marbled whites have uh, really only been recorded on the transect for the last five to six years. Initially just ones and twos and uh, over the last uh, five or six years they've increased every year up to probably recording 20 or 30 a year now in good years. It's a species that we used to associate with much further south in England um, on the south downs and warm climatic places like that. But uh, as the climate has warmed up, the species has spread rapidly north across Britain and is now uh, heading north of East Anglia and up uh, into um, the Midlands and across England and is colonising areas of grassland that are not such pristine habitat as it used to associate with. So it's able to adapt to lower quality habitat because of the improvement in the climate as far as it's concerned. It's a really beautiful species. It's actually, actually part of the brown family. So although it's predominantly white, it's got brown patches on it and the brown eye spots, which distinguish it as a member of the brown family. And uh, like all of the browns, it lays its eggs on grasses. We record the butterflies in sections, and each section has a slightly different habitat. So we've just finished section one and had 11, marbled, uh, 11 meadow browns, one marbled white, two small tortoiseshell and a skipper which we couldn't quite identify because it was too fast um, and we're now going to start section two basically we're recording everything that we see within a five meter cube of the observer so if i'm the center of the line i'm looking at two and a half meters to my left two and a half meters to my right and up to five meters in front of me up to five meters above me anything in that imaginary cube gets counted and identifi identified and counted and as we see it we just tally them on the sheet just going to start section three now which um, runs alongside the hedge that was laid in the hedge lane championships up to the farm boundary we've got meadow brown here it's probably the commonest grassland species that we've got on the farm meadow browns have a bit of orange on the green um, helps to identify them um, yeah, probably 15 species are around about this time of year in this habitat. Uh, you might not see them all every time you come out. Uh, some of them are rarer than others. Um, there's a small tortoise in there as well. Um, but the small heath is another one of the brown family related to the meadow brown and the marbled white but it's a much smaller species and it really needs short grass and sort of dry conditions where it, the caterpillars can feed on the, the finer grasses that grow there. It doesn't really compete with the other species in, in more lush habitats. Um, so it's not very common on our farm but it is increasing a bit and um, it's quite a 
nationally declining species, so it's good to see numbers of those going up. So we've just finished section three, which is quite a long section with a nice grass margin, and we've seen 30 butterflies on that section. Um, and the majority were meadow brown with uh, 18 of those. So quite a few small tortoise shells, which is good to see. Um, they have a, a sort of a life cycle where they spend the winter hibernating um, and you see them early in the spring, sort of March and April, and they lay their eggs on nettles and the caterpillars rapidly feed on the, the young nettle plants um, and then they emerge as butterflies at this time of year they'll lay their eggs again on nettles and they'll develop into another brood which emerge in the autumn um, and that brood is the one that spends its winter hibernating ready to lay eggs again in the spring so it's really nice to see them because um, they had a bit of a, a crash in numbers um, a few years ago with a parasitic fly appeared on the scene and started to attack the caterpillars um, but they seem to have either built up resistance to that or the fly has started to decline and uh, they're back into in balance with each other now and we're just seeing good numbers. So um, I've already seen six, seven, eight, nine of those today. Uh, they're at the peak of their sort of um, midsummer emergence, which is lovely to see. You're along the uh, eastern edge of the Lark Rice Farm here in the old parish boundary between Barton and Grantis. Uh, an ancient hedge line and there's still quite a lot of elm growing here so you can see the elm here um, it gets to a good height before Dutch elm disease takes hold and kills it off and then it starts growing again from the roots and elm is an important tree for white letter hair streak which is a small butterfly that flies around at this time of year um, often quite high up and sometimes above the five meter count in the area um, but it's very inconspicuous quite small and it tends to flit around the tips of the leaves so you have to be careful just looking for those and also there are one or two oak trees along here as well which might have a purple hair streak which is quite similar to species at first glance um, and both need to be uh, kept an eye out for. We don't get them every year, uh, they're probably here every year but we don't record them every year because the numbers are very small. Coming into section five, which is one of the best um, parts of the whole Trantec, uh, one of the restored hay meadows down by the Bourne Brook, and you can see um, a wide variety of flowering plants and uh, grasses growing here. Last, uh, the last three years, we've been grazing it with sheep, and um, that's uh, reduced the overgrowth of the grass quite a lot, and allowed a lot of the wildflowers to come through in, in abundance. So. At the moment we've got a, a lot of nectar from the knapweed here and oxeye daisy and earlier in the year there were quite a few uh, meadow buttercups and cowslips for that. So we're just walking section five of the butterfly transects and come across a little cluster of pyramidal orchids which haven't been recorded in this field before so they've made their way in. They're tiny little seeds that are airborne and land on ground where they have to find a fungus to interact with in order to germinate. The seed itself is so light that it doesn't have any food reserves in it at all and it can't germinate without the help of a fungus. So they have to hit a really good bit of environment to take root. You can't buy the seeds for these, they are minute. So it's all down to look and chance and creating the right habitat for them to occupy. And it takes a few years before they actually get big enough to flower, starting from such a small seed. So this plant could have been here for four or five years, unseen, with the tiny little green leaves. So these look a bit like the small white, um, but they have fine green uh, stripes on the underside, which you can just about see through from the upper side. Um, the small white and the large white are the two cabbage whites which lay their eggs on, on your cabbage plants at home. Uh, the green veined white is a much more uh, acceptable species from a gardener's point of view because they lay their eggs on wild plants like garlic mustard. Butterflies and moths are all part of the family Lepidoptera and actually um, genetically and taxonomically there is no way of discriminating between the two. 
um, we just happen to call some of them butterflies and some of them moths. So there are plenty of moths that fly in the day and uh, butterflies can fly by night as well. So that's not one way of telling them apart. Um, there are colourful moths and drab butterflies, so that isn't really a help either. Um, one thing that some people talk about is the clubbed tip to the antennae, which butterflies have, but there are some moths that have that as well, so even that doesn't work. Dive skipper here, just a little bit more relaxed than the small skippers, with paler blotches on the wings as well as being pure orange, which helps to identify them as well as the two millimetres extra size that they have. All of the skippers rest with their wings held half open. So here we have another meadow brown, which have really proven their name and we're getting a lot of them in this meadow. So on my tally system, we've had 15 and then another 10, 20, 25. So we've already had 40 of these butterflies on this section. So you can see how abundant they are. We've still got another 150 meters to count. Um, so it's really quite a common species here and obviously all the caterpillars uh, that they come from are part of the food chain for small mammals like shrews and uh, birds like um, blackbirds and uh, dunnocks and things like that which are looking for insects in the grass. Well they're just um, they're grass feeders and this is a big hay meadow full of grass so we've got a vast expanse of grass here um, and uh, this is one of the things that we've lost from most of the countryside is big areas of semi-wild grass really. Uh, if it's being mown every week for, as a lawn or a playing field, the, the caterpillars don't get a chance to develop. And if it's um, turned into a sort of silage field with um, rye grass and no wildflowers, there's nothing for the butterflies to feed on. Uh, but a hay meadow like this, which only gets cut once a year, um, is just perfect for them. Uh, and, and just the volume of grass here means that it can support a huge volume of insects. So there were, there were 73 butterflies on the meadow section, which beats all of the other sections we'd walked uh, prior to that um, in total. So uh, we'd seen about 48 butterflies before we got to the meadow and then 73 in the meadow. Uh, so it just shows how important meadows are to butterflies and insects in general. It's not just the meadow brown, but a whole range of species. And then amongst them, all the moths, uh, flies, um, uh, various aphids, bugs, beetles, uh, spiders, and everything else that lives in there, just means that it's a great habitat for um, wildlife in general, and one that we've lost masses of in, in, as a country, in the country as a whole. Two small heaths and courtship uh, display here, so. The female's flying around as fast as she can and if the male can keep up with her then he's a fit enough adult for her to choose to mate with. If he can't keep up, he's not good enough. We've got here a ringlet just resting and you can see the underside of the wings with these beautiful uh, cream edged circles look a bit like the Olympic rings. It's also a slightly darker brown than the meadow brown and with a clear white fringe to the wings which um, is more obvious when they open the wings. Uh, on the open upper side of the wings, you can just see the black dots where each of those rings would be. Um, so it helps to identify it from both sides. It's another grass feeder, so it's related to the meadow brown and uh, the marbled white that we were talking, looking at earlier. But it likes slightly damper habitat than the other two species, so this one's resting up on the edge of a ditch. Coming up to the start of uh, the final section now, so we've finished section 6, which is along the ditch, and then we've got section 7, which goes along this uh, hedge road, uh, back to where we uh, started section 3. So thistles get a bad rep, obviously they're an annoying weed, but they're very good for a nectar, so a lot of butterflies, and in fact one of our most spectacular species, the painted lady, lays its eggs on the thistles and the caterpillars eat it. So um, always leave a bit of space for thistles. So I've just completed the transect at uh, 1300 hours. 
it's taken a little bit longer than our normal walk because we've been stopping for filming an hour and a half on that, it's normally about an hour. Final score was 166 butterflies um, and yeah over half of those were on the, the meadow I think, 73, what's that, 100 and, well nearly half of them were on the meadow, one section on the meadow. Um, we had two, three species of skipper, two species of white, one nymphalid tortoiseshell and uh, four species of brown, so uh, ten different species altogether.